Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Ryan, are you okay? Oh, hi, hi Judy. Sorry, I'm not doing anything. It's Father's Day weekend. <laughs> Ryan, you have to do one thing. You have to watch the new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and happy Father's Day weekend to all the dads out there. We hope you get to spend some time in your garden and spend some time with your fathers. Coming up in the show today, we're going to take a visit to a garden railroad. We'll also show you the correct way to pick berries. But coming up first, a truckload of fuchsias. Well, it is all about fuchsia plants today at Blooming Junction, and I'm with Ron. And Ron, I can't believe how many you have on those tables over there. How many? We have about 50 varieties of fuchsias, hardy fuchsias. That is just amazing. It's just an ocean in the shade house there. It's it is. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. It's incredible. So you picked out some of them, and yeah. so let's talk about them. Okay, I picked out some because I found them to either be um, their new varieties, oh or interesting varieties, um, beautiful colors, contrast and size, and we'll just go down the row and, and talk good. about them. This one's called Lottie Hobby. It gets about uh, oh, a foot and a half tall, kind of spreading, a uh, cute little fuchsia flower on it. Um, this one here is a Groen's Cons. Um, this is a, a rather new one. This will get about 30 inches, and it's just got a beautiful, wow. um, orangey peachy that's, that's really color. unusual it is very unusual um this one's called cat jan here Aww. this one gets a couple feet tall and you'll see it's so got a tiny. very a small tiny little flower so much diversification really cool there really is there's a lot um uh, uh diversity in the leaf size um, the speciosa over there by you, this one? Um, yes, has a rather large leaf. Mm -hmm. um, that's a beautiful plant. Um, that one's been around for quite a while. Very nice. Uh, this one here is called a Golden Herald, and this has got uh, you know the beautiful golden contrast to the leaf. Plus your classic fuchsia flower. Um, a lot of people like this um, here. The hummingbirds must just have a blast here. They are so well fed. Yes, there's a lot of hummingbirds out in the shade house. Um, this one is an interesting one. This is called Erecta. Um, and this one uh, doesn't necessarily have a pendulous flower like uh, most of the fuchsias do. It's more erect, that's the name. Yeah, very cool. Um, this one right here is a double auto. Um, this is your classic fuchsia, but this one has just an enormous flower on it. Um, this is one of my favorites. This gets about uh, two to three feet tall. And really, they bloom all summer? All summer. In fact, you know, when people ask me for something um, that blooms all summer in, in part shade to shade, uh, fuchsias are usually where we go because they just continue to bloom all season long. And then what about um, their care though? Um, there's a little bit different planting. That's yeah, kind of a um, newer idea. You know, um, I'm, I'm of the belief that you can plant your fuchsias low, uh, not quite as low maybe as a tomato plant, but lower than you would uh, normal plants. Um, I think it protects in the winter time too and it conserves water. Um, and it also will accept a little bit more sun that way uh, and with mulching. Um, my fuchsias at home, uh, except dry shade, uh, I don't really water that area in the summertime, oh. and they do very well. That is cool. And so that would take a couple of years to get a really nice root Right, fall. right. That's really interesting, though. I mean, it kind of expands where we could put them in the garden. That's right. Sure does. Um, here we have uh, Yolanda Frank. Um, this is a beautiful one here. Um, I like the, the contrast in so the, the petals there. Um, and then this is um, one of the DeBrons. This one's a smoky blue. Wow. Um, this is a rather new one too. Um, that's just a beautiful one there. A little more upright. 
Yeah, and this is uh, this is Fusionade eighty eight, and I love <laughs> this one for the color. It's wow, just got that's your striking a fuchsia color. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower. You know, we so love them in baskets, but to have them in a ground or even in a container, we can do that? They do great in containers, yeah. That is nice. And so, you know, Ron, we want to come out. We want to come get these beautiful plants. So do you have some um, procedures here? Well, you know, normally we'd be wearing masks, but we're six feet apart right now. Um, we do require that you wear a mask when you're out. Um, we also, you know, limit the amount of people in the store at checkout um, to about four uh, people. Um, we follow uh, most of the, or all of the, uh, the guidelines, the protocols, yeah, yeah, to make it safe for everybody to shop. Yeah, but it's so nice to be able to come out. I mean, it's out in the country out here, and it's really a lot of open spaces. You shouldn't yeah. feel claustrophobic, and I'm sure people are respectful of yeah, each other. Yeah, and our yard's huge, mm -hmm. so there's never bottlenecks and, right. and crowded environment out there. Yeah. Well, you know, this is such a beautiful place to come, you know, come out for a drive, get out of the city and come out and enjoy the fresh air and the sunshine and get a fuchsia. If you have any other questions, please go to Garden Time and we'll click you over to Blooming Junction website. Thanks so much, Ron. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. So for the parts of your life that just can't stop, it's essential to keep moving forward safely. And now it's easier than ever to own a brand new Subaru from Capital. Not only can you shop hundreds of Subarus online and get questions answered instantly, but now you can test drive, finance, and even complete your purchase all from the comfort of your home. So keep planning for the future. We'll be here to help make the road ahead just a little bit smoother. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Join us for a special Berries, Brews, and Barbecue happening Father's Day weekend featuring organ craft ciders, brews, and barbecue. Enjoy strawberry shortcake, live music, barbecue, and much more. It's safe farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Well, nothing says summer like a sunny size and big tropical plants. And I'm with Rosie down at NM. And Rosie, you have some really cool plants down here. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank what, what, you. Do, what do we have today? Okay, so these are tropicals that just I call them simply a wow plant. And so for something to go from this right here to this in one season. Really? Yes, right there. Wow, <laughs> and that, is, that is a wow plant, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And they're really, really easy. Most tropicals will take sun or shade and um, they just go from the, you know, going like crazy. And so are you, are people putting these in pots or containers or in the yard or what's, you know, where's the best places to put these? Well, I always say the more, the better. <laughs> put them in all your pots and containers. I love them in pots. I love them in the yeah. ground, wherever you want a real uh, tropical spot. Just put one of these and they're just really, um, they give you so much bang for your Buck. I mean, it's def definitely a statement. Oh, absolutely. Piece. And just that they're so easy and... Yeah, I mean, you have um, tons of big mixed containers full yes. of with these in the center with all the color around yeah. it that uh -huh. they're, they are making that. So, yeah, yeah, this is a really good thriller. Yeah, so, and what are, so what are these guys over here? These are colocasias and these, um, the leaves point down and they are generally in the darker colors and they these take the full sun or full shade so okay. plant them anywhere and then the alocasias 
these guys, these guys right here, here these, these two right yes here. i tell people that they prefer afternoon shade they'll be okay in full sun but they kind of have that weathered look okay they will kind of yes. you know, burn out a little bit exactly. and then these leaves looks like they're pointing more yeah, upright exactly yeah now are these you know is one hardier than the other you know yeah the no well they're the alocasias actually after a season they make an excellent house plant okay yes okay. So very very easy and they get huge, so you better have a spot yeah, Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, but um, the, the colocaceous, they have to go dormant. So right. for this to winter over, you would need to protect it somehow. We do have one variety, this pink china, it comes back on its own. That's the only true hardy uh, colocacea that I know of. It looks like you know you get different combinations. You know you have the red stems and these with the green foliage, oh. or red stems and purple foliage and you know, very modeled yeah. in different looks. This, so this illustrious is one of our favorite just because of what the back stem looks like. And they're just, you know, the more sun they get, the more shinier the leaves are and more color they and you, have. And you could go through and, you know, because it looks like your clump is getting pretty big in one season. So right. if it's in a pot or container and you do winter it over, can you, you divide, know, divide that Oh, out? absolutely. You can divide it and they grow fast. So it, it's just so fun. And I call them just pure entertainment plants. Right. It's, it just and then you have a couple others, you know, between the alocasias and colocasias, you also have canna lilies. Cannas, And yes. you have a few different varieties over here where this one looks kind of like the, the alocasias or colocasias. So there's cannas and there's bananas. <laughs> there's this and there's that. But this is a canna banana. And okay. so it has the growth habit of um, a banana but the foliage of a canna, this particular variety does not bloom. It's just grown for the Most foliage. foliage. Okay. Yeah, musifolia. And it gets in one year up to 12, 15 oh, feet wow. tall. Yeah, it's spectacular. And the, right next to it is the canna pretoria. And this is the pretoria, which has yes, that beautiful striped. Beautiful, and the beautiful orange flowers. And the cannas will take full sun. The blooming cannas need a little bit Good more fork. sun than the, just like a can of musifolia, you can put it in sun or shade. And there's, you know, once again, multiple colors as far as leaf colors and bloom colors. Exactly. But also much, much hardier than the allocations yes. or the colocations. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Much hardier and they bloom from now until frost. Right. So, so it you just still, gives you me still that, get yes. that, you know, that big tropical bold, bold look exactly. and still have it come back. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Year. Now, you guys are open down here, you know, if people were to come down, you know, to find a great selection like this. Is, you know, coming down to the nursery the best place to get these, or we're... Well, we're, yes, for now we're open until July 5th, and okay. we do a, couple, a few farmer's markets, but the, right for now this is the best place to come. And you would have all this information would be on your, on your website yes. as far as yes. your, your dates or where yes. you're open or your yeah. appearances yeah. can be, so... You know, so for a great selection of, you know, some really cool tropicals, some hardies, some non-hardies, you know, different leaf colors, you know, come down to NM and talk with Rosie and you'll have a great selection and lots of great information. So, Rosie, it was a pleasure to be out here. You can go to your website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Rosie. <laughs>
Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I am at a very unique garden today. It is filled with plants and with railroad trains. And I'm with Warner, who's the homeowner here. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank Great. you. Great. And you are a member of the Rose City Garden Railroad Society. And you just have this unbelievable backyard with a train. Yes, it's a big one. <laughs> we filled up as much of the yard as I could with trains. It's amazing. Yeah. So how did you get all started with this? Well, it started when I was just a kid, <laughs> if we wanted to go that far back. Lionel trains under the Christmas tree oh. all my life through college. I had to put it aside. Medical school, I started playing with small trains. We had a, a club in my garage in medical school. And then, uh, again, kids came and decided there wasn't room in a house, so started putting <laughs> things out. And, and we live in the most beautiful garden area, of the, I think, of the world here in Oregon, and it was just a natural fit to find trains that would run outside. Oh, that is cool. About 25 years ago, they started making these trains that were big, about the size of a loaf of bread, and they run beautifully outside. The track is durable, it stays in place all year long, and it just evolved from there. Oh, it is remarkable because it's not just the backyard, it goes into the front yard, it actually goes into the basement. Actually runs into the basement for needing more space to turn the trains around and head back up. And the trains in, in our concept that I like don't run in circles. <laughs> the train imaginarily runs from a town we call Glacier. It's somewhere in the far northwest, runs to a town we call Bear's Paw. And the train in our imagination actually goes from one place to another. But to serve more purpose during harvest season from our grapevines, we actually cut the grapes from the from the vines, oh. put some in the cars, and run the cars to the crusher and destemmer, and actually make it a working railroad. So <laughs> it's more than just a toy train. Ah, and you've really melded a lot of your different hobbies here because you said you were into bonsai, and in the front, those trees are just kind of larger bonsai. Yes, I, again, the hobbies of, of bonsai, or at least small trees, uh, was one area which kind of melded into garden railroading, and I like to work in the dirt and with <laughs> rocks. I've always been fascinated with geology and architecture. I love building the structures. In fact, if you wanted to know the truth, I like structures maybe a little more than trains. Oh, so we I won't have say that too loud. friends in our club. <laughs> well, the friends in our club know that, and they come and help run trains on busy days like this. Oh, and well, it is lovely. And how long is the train? How many feet of track do you have? There's about 1,200 feet of main line oh, that goes from one town eventually to another town. You can turn around in places and go back where you were, but for operation, it we imagine it as a real railroad. It's just small. Ah, well, you know, you've heard one side of the story, but I'm going to talk to Brooke, who is Warner's spouse. And so, Brooke, what kind of compromise did we have to come to make this all happen? Well, we're constantly making compromises. <laughs> uh, when we originally started landscaping, I wanted grass, a yard, waterfalls, and he wanted a train track, and I wanted some grapevines, and he wanted a train track, and I wanted roses and tomatoes, and he wanted a train track. <laughs> so. We now have a lot of train track, but we also have grapevines, tomatoes, roses, and grass. And uh, I love having a cup of coffee in the morning and sitting outside listening to the waterfall. And it's, you know, it's just so relaxing and private for ourselves. And uh, we've worked together in our business for um, over 35 years. And so we've learned to work together and make compromises you know, through our life and uh, we're a team and uh, we've made it work and enjoy our yard and hobby very much. Oh, and it's just lovely, lovely. 
Normally, the Rose City Garden Railroad Society hosts visitors to their gardens on the Saturday before Father's Day. This year, they are not allowed to do that because of COVID-19. You can still see some of their great train layouts and find out more information on the Society on their website and Facebook pages. We'll have links to those sites on the Garden Time webpage. Well, here we are standing next to our columnar apple tree. And this time of year, you may notice some fruit that's really small that have fallen off the tree. And this is actually normal. What this is is called June drop. And it's the small fruit that was incompletely pollinated that was dropping off the tree. So these larger fruits have been fully pollinated. And the ones that did not get pollinated, the tree is shedding those to make, make room for the pollinated fruit. And another tip for later in the season is to maybe thin the fruit. See this cluster of apples right here. So down, maybe in August or so, you wanna take one of those away so that you can get a bigger piece of fruit later in the season. So this is June drop. You'll find some small little fruit on the ground. Don't worry, it's totally normal. This week's plant pick is brought to you by Little Prince. Our plants won't croak. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Well, I'm out here with Linda. We're out in the beautiful gardens of the Rogerson Clematis Garden. And Linda, the clematis are in bloom. What are we doing with them this time of year? Well, we're open. People can come and see what we're doing this time of year. We are so glad the public is coming back to the public garden. Uh, folks can now drive into Lusher Farm and park to visit the garden. Which is great because yeah. you know, it's in its glory right now. Right. So you wouldn't think it, it's sort of calendar intuitive, but our volunteers have been doing a ton of pruning this time of year, and we're pruning big things like this. This is a Clematis Montana okay. form called Broughton Star. Uh, pink flowers, double, lovely thing, but they don't rebloom very much. So once they're done blooming, you can go in and hard prune these. Oh, really? And I mean down to two or three feet tall, um, and you can get them out of where they're right, causing it, trouble. Right, saying, I mean, it looks like it's growing all over and taking <laughs> over the bushes next to it. So Right. So we can outrun them. We have opposable thumbs. We have the pruners. Right. And you wouldn't think of this time of year to be pruning them. Right. But if it's something that flowers early and doesn't rebloom much, now is the time to prune as much or as little as you need to. Gotcha. And then you have some down, down the way here. We can oh, go yeah. take a look We're at We're about so halfway get, done. So you can see some see of them. How, that are, how far back you can actually, actually prune these. You bet. So let's go walk down there and okay. take, take a look. And then this would be an example of one that you've already pruned back. We've seen before, and this is after. So we could have actually come down even lower, but you can see there are growing points on oh, yeah. it pretty far down. So you can take it back that far. And plenty of those pieces are big around as my thumb. And 
do you do what you got to do. And are you pruning it more for like shape at this point or are you just just, just to get to, it out of the surrounding plants that it was impacting negatively. And then it's going to spend the rest of the summer flushing all of that new new growth. So you come bet. early so spring. So next spring, this is Marjorie. She's going to bloom bang on time. Um, we would expect little to no um, autumn flowering on this at all. Okay. No rebloom to speak of. Right. But it's going to regenerate itself. Obviously, it's done it right. pretty quickly here. And By fall, we might be going, oh, maybe we should have taken it back harder. <laughs> and now, you know, with the, you know, the gardens are open and you also have a sale. on the Right. right. We've been doing online sales. So okay. if you go to rogersonclematiscollection.org backslash shop, okay. you can order online. And then we have what we call coop side pickup <laughs> coop because side. <laughs> we're at a farm. We don't have curbs, but we have a chicken coop. So you come to the chicken coop, give us a call, and our volunteers who have the phone will run your plants out to you. And pickup days are Wednesdays and Fridays from okay. 10 to 2. But this weekend, the city has said we can start having on-site sales. Excellent. So people can come out on Sunday from 10 to 2 and they'll be able to walk through the sales terrace one direction okay please when you come to the garden bring a mask yeah. because sometimes you may be out here when our volunteers are here working so we don't insist that you wear it but when you're shopping in the terrace it's a confined area so you will it's, want yeah, to we wear want it. everybody to be yeah. safe yeah yeah right. And so you have a great selection. You know, the gardens are in full bloom right now. You can see what the at plants the, are looking on at. On the website is a full list of what we have available okay. for sale. So that's what you'll see when you come out on Sunday to shop in gotcha. person. Excellent. So, you know, come on out to the Rogerson Clementus Gardens or visit them online. You know, excellent selection. And now's a great time to get out and visit the gardens and see what these beautiful plants are looking like. So Linda, always a pleasure to be with you. Thank, Thank you, you for Ryan. opening up in the Thank gardens. Thank you, Garden so Time. <laughs>Well, I'm standing here with Tom from Bonide, and we are at Terra Gardens. And Tom, you know, there's a couple of things that always tend to haunt us gardeners. Things like blackberry vines that are just rampant sometimes, and then the uh, horsetail mm -hmm. stuff. You have a product that takes care of those. I sure do, and it, and the, it is label specific for blackberries uh, and horsetail. Nice. Uh, horsetail can be a little scary. It, it, uh, at first sight, it's almost prehistoric. Right. It's uh, quite, quite the invasive and ugly weed. Uh, but uh, before I tell you how this works, the magic ingredient is something called triclopyr. Uh, so anytime you're going after blackberries, make sure it contains some percentage of triclopyr uh, and for horsetail. So um, this will make it very easy because there's no mixing, there's no spraying. You simply unscrew the cap and beneath the cap is a brush. Oh wow. And you, so from there you just brush it onto the blackberry cane or the actively growing horsetail. So you're not, I like this too, because then if you're spraying, there's chances that sprays can be caught in the wind too and go elsewhere. This just diminishes all that. It diminishes it completely. There's no drift because we're not spraying. So you can just um, pinpoint exactly where you're going. I will say the most actively growing weed, the most actively growing blackberry horsetail, even thistle, that's what you want to get this on. So as soon as you see it, the sooner you see it starting is when that's the best Absolutely, time to get it on there. Yeah. And usually one application, and it's a nice even brush stroke uh, with that dauber cap, um, get it completely covered both sides, um, and usually one application, it'll translocate down to the roots and kill it completely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, there you have it. You know, we always want to make gardening easier for all of us. So for more information on this product, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website, or you can just come out here if you're in the Salem area to Terra Gardens and pick it up there. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips 
at regionalh2o.org. Surround yourself with wonderful color this summer. It's time for the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Hydrangeas are the perfect plant for any garden, large or small. We are cleaning out our nursery, so come and take some plants home to your garden. We're offering special, once a year pricing on nearly everything we grow. Also, check out our selection of grasses and other blooming perennials. It's the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. You know, the secret is out to get the best fruit. You have to go pick it yourselves. I'm at Smith Berry Barn with Rich, and Rich, you know, we really need to know the tips and the tricks of getting that best fruit that you have out here for us. So the best fruit, we, you know, we kind of watch our fields pretty closely and when it's time to pick, we open. Um, uh, there's some few key things to pick. I mean, all raspberries aren't ready at the same time and you see different shades there, but a good way, I mean, they should come off really easily with your finger and fork. It's just that you shouldn't have to pull. Like if I'm pulling, it shouldn't have to come off. But they, so you just kind of work your way down. If they come, they come. And so just a little gentle tug. Just a gentle tug and it should come off really easy. So you're not taking a stem, you're not taking branches? Nope, with the raspberries, they leave the receptacle, that's that part there, they leave it with the plant. Um, as opposed to a blackberry, the receptacle will come, but yeah, you shouldn't have to pull. Like if you're tugging, you know it's not ready to go. And so even if you can't sample because of your mask, you know that it's <laughs> coming off easy, it's good to go. Because all the red fruit's not, not necessarily ready. And really, you're not damaging plants and you're leaving it for the next person to come because these are going to be re ready in a couple days. Correct. Or even overnight, like we can, you can pick this very well one day and the next morning you can come and pick the exact same amount of fruit. It's just going to ripen that quickly this time of year because you have that short window that you're three week season or so that you're picking into. Wow. And I see right across the way are some blueberries. So let's go talk to about blueberries too. Sounds good. These are beautiful blueberries. So give us some tips on picking blueberries. So blueberries in the same fashion, they're all not ready at the same time. Um, just like two fingers, and they should come off really easily. What you wanna make sure, what you already picked it at this point, um, darkest color's best, and it's all not going to be ready. So if you have to tug hard, it's not gonna come. Um, or a lot of times down on the plant, it's the red on the back, which you don't wanna do those. It's kind of visual. Okay. You usually take the biggest plumped up fruit and it usually comes off and that's, they're ready to go. It just really makes sense. And you want people to have the most delicious fruit. So really, these are great tips that you're gonna get the best ones out here. Correct, correct. Well, you know, now we're gonna go up to the greenhouse and talk to Joelle and talk to her about what else is going on at the farm. Joelle, you know, we think of Smith Berry Barn, we think of berries, but you still have so many beautiful plants. We do, yes. So people get their, you know, their berries and then they get to take beauty home too, flowers. We are open, we're open to the public, um, normal business hours. Our store is open, our garden area is open, our milkshake bar and ice Ooh. cream bar is open. We just have a few, you know, new protocol just like most places do. Uh, so we were just talking to Rich and so we wore our masks. So really you asked that masks are... We do, so we're asking, masks are um, requested. We are also asking to limit somewhat the group size, although this is a family environment, so kids are welcome. We just ask that they stay with, you know, stay with the parents. Um, we do still have activities like our animal feeding. We're asking for new um, protocols such as hand washing before and after you enter. We do have a couple of different stations set up for that. Um, and then picking is different this year. Uh, and yeah, we brought a box out with us when we were talking about how to pick. So no bringing your own. No bringing your own. And, and we're basically reservation only at this time. So what you're going to want to do is go to our website. We have our website completely set up with, um, it's one day at a time right now. It will grow as the varieties of berries continue to grow. Um, but you look for a reservation opening, make your reservation, and then you just show up for your spot. You're welcome to come and pick whatever you can at that time. Um, and it just basically limits our numbers so that we can still have people and families out, but just less at a time. Right, well, you're just watching for the safety of all of us and for your staff. Exactly. You know, and then these days it's wonderful to hear because we just all want to be safe, but we want to go out and enjoy and get fresh fruit for our families. Exactly, so you can still do that. We're just asking that you do it a little bit differently and a little bit more moderate, you know, pace. Yeah. 
So, you know, you can go to the Garden Time website, and we have their website on ours, so you can go click to it and get all that pertinent information and find out when you can make your reservation to come out to Smithbury Barn. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, nobody likes bugs on their plants, but what if you had a plant that eats bugs? I'm with Mike out here at Little Prince, and we got some cool plants to show you today. Yeah, they're great. The carnivorous plants, one of my favorite types of plant, personally, so I grow a lot of them at my house. And, you know, what exactly is a carnivorous plant? Uh, it's just a plant that has evolved to eat insects to gain its nutrients instead of taking nutrients from the soil. So photosynthesizes just like a normal plant, has roots, takes water up like a normal plant, but is native to areas that have really poor soils and nutrient deficient yes. soils, so it has evolved to eat insects as a way to uh, gain nutrients. Because it looks like you know each one eats it a little differently, right? It looks like some go in a big a big throat and others might be close up on them. So what are some of the yeah. differences? So the Saracenias, the pitcher plants, these are the hardy ones. They have little tiny hairs that all point down inside it. And the insect is attracted to the inside of the pitcher and it falls in and there's water that collects at the bottom of that pitcher. And then because the hairs all point down, they can't climb their way oh. back out of it. And so, and the Venus fly traps have little tiny hairs on their pads. And when two of those hairs are triggered at the exact same time, the trap will close very rapidly and catch the insect inside of it. Now, do you want to go in and try to, you know, everybody thinks that's pretty cool. Do you want to go mm -hmm. in and try to feed, feed your own fly traps or play around with them? Uh, if you have a, a fly that, or an insect or something that's not quite dead and you want to throw it in there and it can move around just enough to get that fly trap to close, that would be fine. But contrary to popular belief, you don't want to feed a hamburger <laughs> and uh, no ham either, no meat products of any kind. <laughs> they're strictly insect diets. Um, and you don't, they're super cool just to hit them and to trigger them for fun but they have a limited number of times those traps can actually close before they die off. So and you can actually damage the plant by kind yes, of playing around with it too yes, much. Yes. Now there's you know, a couple different kinds over here that look, you know, what are these ones over here? You've got fuzzy ones and different kinds of... Yeah, well we have a couple other um, uh, pitcher plants, the Nepenthes. They're tropical pitcher plants, so their pitchers are slightly different. You can see they kind of hang. So it's really a good plant for uh, a hanging basket or something okay. like that. But they are tropical in nature and not hardy to our area. And they would need to be inside during the winter months. So those you'd want to put in like a decorative pot or a container yeah. like this where you could have it inside. Yeah. Now, now the other ones that are hardy, what kind of soil do we need to use with those if we're going to have them? Do they go in the ground or best in a pot? or? Right. So. Our soils are too good here in Oregon for them, so never plant them in the ground. Uh, an ideal potting mix for carnivorous plants is a 50% peat, 50% perlite mix. Okay. Um, and never fertilize them at all. The fertilizer will kill them. And your water is one of the most important things about it. You need a very low mineral count low salt water. So if you're in the Portland area, I live in Westland and our tap water is okay for them because it's very pure water. If you're on a well or you're not certain of your water, buy distilled water or okay. collect rainwater. Okay. So yeah, that's and you want them constantly moist all the time. Never let them dry out at all. Then and then as far as care in the winter, they can be, you know, the hardy ones can be left out. Do they need to go you know, dormant, or should we bring them in, or what's the best? Yeah, no, is... they they need to be, they need their dormant period. That's okay. why these don't make good house plants at all. So they need to go through a dormant period in the winter, and what I do with my containers at home is I just put some, some leaves over the top of it, and I've had mine for six years plus. Oh, so fun. they've gone through some pretty, pretty cold winters. Right, so it looks like you can get, you know, lots of different, you know, the, the coloring and the textures, there's so many different varieties. I'm assuming, you know, with the hardy ones, you can have a mix, mixed container with lots of different ones going on yeah. at the same time. Yeah, exactly. As they, you can mix all of them together. So, 
not so a problem at all. So it sounds like you know there's lot, lots of fun things. You know, if you want to have a plant that's actually going to eat eat the bugs, and it's kind of a fun experiment for kids. You know, yeah. you can have some for outside, or you can have some some for inside. You know, in a wide range, but you know, make sure you're you know you're following directions or the information as far as having you know the, the right soil. You know, not feeding them something they're not supposed to be eating right. and definitely don't don't fertilize them so nope. and keep the water the water is probably your most crucial aspect of it right after the soil okay. so. you know so you know for more information on these cool carnivorous plants you know you can go to little prince plants online or you can go to gardentime.tv and get all sorts of information or we can click you over to little prince's page so you know, go out and find a great plant you can find these out at your independent garden center thanks for having us mike thanks for coming out Find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. Join us for a special Berries, Brews, and Barbecue happening Father's Day weekend featuring Oregon Craft Ciders, Brews, and Barbecue. Enjoy strawberry shortcake, live music, barbecue, and much more. It's safe farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Surround yourself with wonderful color this summer. It's time for the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Hydrangeas are the perfect plant for any garden, large or small. We are cleaning out our nursery, so come and take some plants home to your garden. We're offering special, once a year pricing on nearly everything we grow. Also, check out our selection of grasses and other blooming perennials. It's the annual spring sale at Hydrangeas Plus. Well, I am so excited to be at the Portland Japanese Garden with Megumi. Mm -hmm. And so we are so excited you are open again. And so really the garden is the garden, isn't it? It is. It's honestly, we've had a lot of our garden staff here um, this whole time just putting their heart and soul into keeping the garden as immaculate and wonderful as possible. Um, and so the garden is, it's still the garden. Um, there's a lot of things that's changed right now in the world, but we're a place that, you know, hasn't really changed. It's still beautiful. It's lush. Irises are going to be blooming oh, soon. Yeah. It's, I'm, we're all glad to be back. It is. And, you know, we were just saying Mother Nature is not canceled. And so things go on. Mm -hmm. And so we've been kind of following you and all of your you. um, Facebook paste postings. Mm -hmm. And it's been so nice to see it, even though we couldn't be here just to see it's our it's our favorite place oh that's thank you so much for saying that we we do feel really honored to to still be the same place and to be able to be open as an outdoor space and um yeah we're excited to have everyone come back through um we're excited to be a place that the community can come to um and get some fresh air and get outside and enjoy nature so definitely and yeah. there's just a little bit of differences mm -hmm. and really if you can tell us what it is so that we can enjoy this place safely yes yeah so um like you were saying the garden itself hasn't changed um it's really just the way that we navigate it so um, starting with, um, you know, we're both wearing masks and so um, all of our staff are wearing masks um, and face coverings. Um, we're asking that all of our guests do as well. Um, and then we're also physical distancing as we also mm -hmm. are. Um, and so we have some signage in place throughout the garden as well that helps to remind people because oftentimes when you're going through the garden, it's really easy to forget and get lost in the moment. So Very much. Yeah, we also have time ticket entry. So um, if you're coming to the garden, you can buy your tickets online um, and reserve your time to come. Um, and then so every 30 minutes, we're allowing people to come in. It really allows us to limit capacity. Um, and again, just make sure that people are social distancing as well. And that is such a nice thing because we can respect each other and, and respect each other's people as they come through the garden. Mm -hmm. And to come here and be so calming and to enjoy this space is, we are just so lucky to have it. Yeah, no, we, we feel lucky to be a place that can do that for the community. And um, we really do feel like Portland is just, we, we love Portland. And so we're really looking forward to seeing everyone back here and, and letting everyone kind of open their hearts and, and enjoy <laughs> nature together. Well, you can go to the Garden Time website and we can click you over to the Portland uh, Japanese Garden website. You can get your tickets, come out and enjoy this wonderful space. It is just really would be good for everyone's heart and soul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Garden Time's Incredible Edibles. Well, here it is. It's late June. We've been in our gardens. We've been planting our vegetable gardens. You know, and there's a lot of us that are new to gardening this year that have just taken this on. And we've gotten our tomatoes in or our things. But there's a lot that we can do to the garden this time of year and to plan out for the rest of the year. So I'm with Ken out at Portland Nursery. And Ken, tell us a little bit about gardening and how to extend that season. Right, yeah, now that the, uh, all the warm crops are in and sort of uh, uh, doing their thing, um, people uh, don't tend to think about the fall garden until it's actually autumn. And by then, of course, it's, it's too late to plant a lot of things. Um, July is actually the time you want to get going on a, a lot of those second plantings, you know, the second crop of broccoli, uh, the cabbage, the kales, those sorts of things. Um, and for those brassicas, it's especially nice because uh, the heat of the summer tends to limit the uh, uh, predations of the cabbage moth, which are such a nuisance right. in the early part of the season. Yes, and you know, the things like, you know, we're, we're harvesting lettuces and things like that, but you know, we can replant those things multiple times throughout the Oh, so, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, lettuces, especially spinach as well, some of the leafy stuff gets a little tired or it bolts really quickly with right. the heat. Um, sometimes you just take a couple weeks, a month off, and then start that next crop. And uh, by the time it's getting into a time when uh, it's, it's a good size, the night temperatures come back down there in August and uh, you, you won't have it bolt as quickly. Right. And then as we're you know, harvesting our garden now and things are coming ripe and mature, and we're thinking about planning, you know, things for later in the fall and the summer. You know, how do we go about, you know, organizing or leaving space in our garden for planting other crops for later? And, you know, is there some tips on, on that? Right. So uh, switch families, you know, maybe if you've uh, had something into uh, uh, lettuces, you might want to uh, consider some fall parsnips or some other kind of a later root crop, uh, especially something you can keep in the ground. Um, okay. Storage can be a you know, sort of a, uh, a premium in the home. And a lot of times if you can just go out into the yard and retrieve things, at least through part of the winter, that's, that's kind of nice. Um, you can do the same thing with uh, leeks, you know, leek and potato soup is a, a great favorite right. in the winter time. So that's a nice one to... Uh, right, because that probably helps, you know, if you have, you know, certain pests that eat certain types, like uh, well, that, you know, by yeah. planting a crop that might be different, you eliminate that, that contamination between pests and the different, different things. You know, now that we're, you know, towards, you know, late June, you know, a lot of people have planted things, but, you know, some people are afraid to, it's like, oh, it's too late to be planting a tomato now. I might not get anything. Is that true, or can you still be planting this time? You, you definitely can. Uh, a couple years back when uh, Alice down at Log House was just starting with all her grafted vegetables, mm -hmm. she sent me uh, grafted, ungrafted pears for trialing, um, you know, eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, uh, 20, 25 pears all in all. Um, and those went in around the 22nd of June. Um, I got great harvest on almost everything. A few of the uh, really long season grafted tomatoes, like the brandy wines, right. uh, I ended up with huge heroic crops of green, not quite ripe tomatoes. But everything else, all the cherries, all the kind of uh, mid season types, uh, nice crop right there at the end of the season. And you can you know, like go up even through like 4th of July on some of these things and still get, get a harvest, you know, depending on late, yeah. how late it's going in, into the summer. It, it varies a little bit with year to year. You know, we never know if we're going to kind of have a, a long fall or a, a, a earlier fall. But uh, I've done corn on the 4th of July. Stick with the shorter season variety right. and uh, still gotten a nice crop out of that. Right. So, you know, there's lot, lots of tips and tricks that we can use as we, you know, we're planting out our garden plots and kind of have that, you know, first wave of stuff kind of planted is now, you know, as that's maturing and we may be harvesting them things, you know, we can kind of look and think about, okay, what is the next? rest of this next month's plan or you know even going into the fall or winter what kind of crops and getting a little bit of get a bit of planning on that so you know and i'm sure you know you guys are the knowledgeable staff out here at portland nursery has lots of tips and tricks on you know how do you guys can help the customer and homeowner prepare their garden beds and you still have this huge selection of veggie starts for the season so. yeah i learn from my staff all the time i mean i i didn't grow kohlrabi for years and somebody brought some into the break room uh, same thing with celery root, you know, it's this little known thing that it's starting to sort of get a following. Um, had, had some uh, at, a, at a party, fantastic, and uh, right. grew it. That was when I was able to keep in the ground all winter. And it's sort of like uh, scallop potatoes, but a little bit sweeter. Uh, right. Makes us a wonderful souffle. Yeah, so, so don't, don't be afraid to try some new things no, and no. you know, come out to it's, the nursery it, here. It's a big world. Right. <laughs> 
So, and you guys have some protocols that you need to, you know, you want to make sure people are following when they come out to the nursery. Absolutely. We are uh, requiring masks at this point. Um, we do have some, uh, some freebies to use if, if a person forgets. Um, we're asking people to keep a respectable distance, something close to six feet. Um, we have parts of the store closed, uh, so we will pull seeds for you or some of the fertilizers. Um, as it's warmed up now, we have been able to put our house plants outside in the front greenhouse so people can once again self-serve and sort of peruse right. those, which is really nice for folks. Right. So, you know, so you can come on out here to Portland Nursery. You know, they're open. The staff is knowledgeable. You can get all the information on how to plant out your garden and your veggies, get a bunch of great starts. So, Ken, we appreciate you being with us today. And as always, make sure you go to your website for any more information, or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, thank you. Nice talking to you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and I wanted to take a second to update you on some of the sanitation practices that we're doing at the store and some of the things that we're asking you to do when you visit. First and foremost, we ask that everybody wears a mask if you can. It's a really great way to decrease transmission and to make sure that all the produce, the customers, and our staff stay safe. Second, we've got a really nice sanitation station set up just as you enter. Make sure that your hands are sanitized, the carts, the basket you use are all sanitized and ready for your shopping. If you don't feel good, stay home. We have a really nice online shopping system set up, so all you have to do is place your order online, we'll give you a call when it's all ready to be picked up, drive into the parking lot, we're happy to take it out to the car for you. Third, a lot of you have been asking about our animal barn and playground. The animal barn we have opened up for the public to come in, see all those farm animals. They have been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Unfortunately at this time, the playgrounds are still closed. It's just too hard for us to keep those areas clean and safe. Thank you everyone for supporting us through all of this and just know that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that you have a safe shopping experience. So I am here with Angie and we are at the Backyard Bird Shop in Lake Oswego. And Angie, you know, we all love our birds. We love the bird feeders. We love seeing them come and eat. But there's been a, a, a lot of frustration with like different rodents, rats and stuff that are not right. eating. So we're going to talk about that and you're going to give us some ideas on how we can help control that. Great. Let me show you a few things that we've got that uh, will really be a big help in preventing seed from landing on the ground. Okay. Um, which and is that what it causes mostly is because it falls to the ground? Right. So when seed accumulates on the ground, it'll draw in all kinds of vermin. Okay. Um, you know, rats, mice, um, squirrels, raccoons, and possums, actually. Wow. Okay. Um, so by preventing the seed from landing on the ground, you can really go ahead and feed birds and keep a clean area and prevent these sort of problems. Um, this right here is a, a tube feeder with a large tray on it. The yeah. large tray catches the seed that the birds drop. Um, and birds are a little bit messy. They, they do drop seeds. <laughs> they are. Um, you know, even the small birds can throw a lot of seed around. So this tray would be a big help in preventing anything from going on the ground. Uh -huh. um, also, the seed that you see here is out of the shell. Now, why would that be important? Having seed that's out of the shell uh, prevents the shells from dropping. The, the shell portion of a bird seed is useless to the birds. And so they're always going to throw that aside and drop it onto the ground. Okay. So by uh, feeding 
shell a seed, you really prevent any waste that Because the, the rats will eat the shells too then, The right? rats will oh, come up goodness. just because shells are on the ground. Wow. Um, and you'll find holes under underneath the feeders where they're taking those shells. Okay. And there's other options though here. There are. This is, if you've already got a, a feeder and you can't attach a tray, this is a screen um, that expands out and catches um, any seed that might drop. Oh. And the birds will actually hop up in here and eat the seed from the screen as well. Okay. And then what is this? This looks like peanuts almost in a <laughs> jar up here. What's that? This is a pecan feast log. This is a solid log of bird seed um, that has had all the shells removed and it's held together with a gelatin. And it's a really clean way to feed birds. Uh huh. And and that's the gelatin doesn't affect the bird at all. It just it helps doesn't. Hold it no, together. it just holds the seeds together. Um, and that log will stay solid. There, it comes in a larger size as well. And a lot of people will use that for vacation feeding. Okay, so this this is probably then the suet then is, this is similar suet. in that hold together thing, so it doesn't fly all over. Right. Well, suet is a fat cake, um, and and this is our own. It has insects in it, and it doesn't have any seeds in it. Oh. And so um, having no seed or any filler seed in suet um, will prevent a lot of the suet from dropping on the ground um, yeah. and the birds will consume more of it and so this is a really clean way of feeding birds. So you also have though there's a specific type of food that you can get. Tell me about these. Right. This is a hot meat. Um, this is a seed that is coated with hot pepper oil. It's actually a habanero oil uh -huh. and that is really unattractive to any mammal. So squirrels, rats, uh, raccoons, possums, nobody's going to want to eat this because of the heat yeah. that's on that seed. And if you've already got seed and you need to treat it, um, this is called flaming squirrel, and this will also work for rodents. Um, this you just coat your seed with, and this, this bottle will treat up to 30 pounds of bird seed. So both of these then are really a great idea to help, just as another step of deterring the, the unwanted mammals from coming and, and, and eating the bird seed. Right. If you've got a problem with them, this will be a good step in the right direction. Well, you know, we all love our birds, and we want to see them happy and healthy and flying around our yard. But if the rats and squirrels are bothering you, go to uh, Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can go to one of the stores, get all this information, and make sure your garden is beautiful for yourself and the birds. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching Garden Time today, and we want to wish every dad out there a happy Father's Day. And for more information on today's show or any of our other episodes, make sure you go to gardentime.tv. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Located in the heart of Willamette Valley's hops, hazelnut, and wine country, Caddy Farms is a beautiful option for your upcoming wedding or event. Enjoy the diverse venue the over 40-acre farm offers, with manicured gardens, a private forest and spacious meadow, chef's kitchen, and covered patios. All just five minutes off of I-5 in Aurora, Oregon. Ketty Farms, now booking upcoming events. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.